Oh, oh, wait a second. Hi, this is Penny Brush coming to you from underwater. I sure wish I could be there tonight to give uh, each of you a big thank you for all that you've done for Chapman Athletics. Dave, I remember the selection committee interview with you like it was yesterday. And I remember how you guaranteed us of your commitment to a solid program that focused on the success of student athletes and the athletics program. And Dave, you held true to that commitment and we thank you for that. You and I had a lot of laughs, a few minutes of Ugh! when we had to deal with NCAA forms and NCAA regulations and trying to get into the SCIAC and budgets and yes, even a few times that coaches and student athletes frustrated us, we had a great time together. And indeed, we salute you tonight and we thank you for all that you've done, especially for the student athletes and the coaches who love you at Chapman University. I would say mentor and a coach's athletic director. He took care of us coach. I haven't coached for so long, he knew exactly what we were going through when we went through a bad loss or a big win. He allowed us to coach our teams, gave us a lot of latitude, uh, but just wanted us to make sure that the standard that he set for us was always attainable. Um, you know, he was our leader, our mentor, but like I said, he, the best thing about it, he was our friend. As most people know, Coach and I would walk in the morning and Coach would look at me and go, gosh, man, I'm hungry and uh, we should stop for breakfast. And I'm going, Coach, you know, we're walking because we want to exercise and, and uh, this is our way of being able to take off 10 or 20 pounds. Say, hey, Richard, why don't, why don't you uh, meet us at Watson's or, or uh, meet us at um, uh, one of the breakfast places. So we finish our walk, we meet Richard, and, and then we would have breakfast, and then Richard would pay for it because neither one of us had a wallet because we were out walking. And so then Richard would have to pay for breakfast and, and uh, then drive us back to school. When we went D2 to D3, you know, he didn't know what to expect at D3 either. And so he just, he was right by, right beside me. I guess I was one of the few coaches that did that transition and helped me through it. One of the story he did say, he goes, Mary, I remember when you were D2 and you'd stand in the huddle, you'd be looking up at the girls and now we're D3, you can look at like this. It's not true. I didn't feel like uh, uh, you, you didn't want to do more than just enough when you're working for Dave Curry just because of his charisma and his leadership that he had for us. Dave, congratulations on your induction to the Hall of Fame here at Chapman University. It's um, well deserved. Um, 25 years, boy, it just gets here, doesn't it? We know that being here at Chapman has been a major part of your life, uh, but we know that you still have a couple more chapters in that book to write. Anyway, I got to get back to a game, but boy, it was special to be able to take a time out and share a couple of minutes with you and Godspeed. Congratulations, Dave. Uh, you, you deserve it. You're a big part of my career and uh, I'm happy that I could be here during this and, and see your family all here. Congratulations. For our first presentation, I'd like to introduce a gentleman who personifies what we mean here by Chapman family, and, and that's the theme. That's what Coach Lavin was talking about. He earned his degree in film and TV from Chapman and worked for NBC for a number of years before starting his own production company called Fresh Cut Creative, where he employs only Chapman University graduates. He, he also has uh, come back to serve as an adjunct faculty member in our Dodge College of Film and Media Arts. And he happens to be the son of our first inductee, and he's literally Chapman Athletics' favorite son, John David Curry. Well, good evening, everyone. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm John David Curry, the uh, son of David Curry. 
Uh, and so I'm, I'm here to introduce my father and, and of course, uh, Dr. Jim Doty as well. So I'm here uh, not only as a proud son, but as a, as a proud alumnus. Um, a lot of you tonight have come up to me and asked, how is dad doing with retire retirement so far? And, uh, you know, he has a brand new pool that no one's allowed to swim in. He has a field in front of the yard that he tells people to get off of. So it's pretty much the same as uh, it's been for It really hasn't changed that much. Uh, when I was 10 years old, um, my mother uh, asked my father to take me to work with him. Uh, he was the head coach of the University of Cincinnati at the time, and I, I had no idea the education I was about to receive. Um, I ran through the tunnel with my dad. I saw my dad take the unexpected losses. I saw him take the unexpected wins. I was there at 5 a.m. watching wind sprints when someone didn't come to practice on time. I saw what he said to the quarterback after the interception. And I saw the halftime speech that uh, turned out to win the game afterwards. And if there's anything that I took from that experience, is that it was always about learning. Always. At the end of the day, and I think a lot of you understand that here tonight, um, at the end of the day, my father was a teacher. And I think that is the role that he's most proud of in his 40, 50 years of uh, athletics. Both he and uh, Dr. Doty understood that in the 24 years they worked together. Uh, they knew what it meant to be a student athlete. And that's a term that used to be thrown around a lot. I think it's also a term we kind of wish we heard a little bit more of. But they understood what it was. So I carried the cord behind my dad for three years, his headphone cord on the sideline. And I used to tell him, if anything goes wrong, don't worry, I'm right there behind you 100%. And that couldn't be more true tonight. And uh, I know my sister and I both are very proud to be sitting next to you tonight, Dad, for something that you really deserve. Uh, so now I'd like to introduce the man who's going to introduce the man. Um, this is someone I've admired for a long time, especially as a student here at Chapman University, um, Dr. Jim Doty. Thank you, John David. You know, this, this has always been one of my favorite events. Uh, when, as president, there are a lot of social obligations and events, uh, but uh, Hall of Fame was always special. And uh, I think, Steve, when you mentioned the family, that's why it is uh, special. It's kind of like a, a family homecoming. Uh, it's a privilege for me to have an, uh, an opportunity to, uh, to uh, introduce our next recipient uh, inductee in the Hall of uh, Fame. Uh, uh, basically, I've been asked uh, uh, on behalf of uh, Dave to testify that uh, anyone who could have served under me as a chief lieutenant for 25 years is deserving of being in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> by, by the way, yes, by the way, uh, you can, you can t from my voice, you can see I have a little bit of a cold. Uh, and I mentioned to Dave um, just earlier that I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get through the entire introduction. And he said, well, that'll be a break for everyone. <laughs> you know, that w one of the things that I think we should all be very proud of in Chapman's transformation uh, is uh, that a major part of it uh, was the fact that uh, our Donald Kennedy athletic program and our move from Division II to Division III, going from 100 students to more than 500, was a major part of that transformation. And it could not have happened were it not for 25 years of great leadership on the part uh, of Dave Curry. When I think of um, all we went through, uh, and, and, and listening to Penny Brush when she mentioned uh, all the forms and the anxiety and the frustrations. Uh, I remember when we were together, Dave, with Penny in San Antonio, when we were up for approval uh, for, for SCIAC. And I won't go through the details, but it was um, a very anxious time. And uh, we got through it, but uh, it wouldn't have happened if it weren't for um, uh, everything that uh, Dave did. By the way, while I'm on the subject, 
I want to uh, acknowledge someone else. When we went from Division Two to Division Three, we were worried that we would lose all of our visibility and uh, and uh, uh, press coverage, television coverage. And the one person after we went to Division Three started to brought football back to Chapman. And the one person who uh, broadcast all of that uh, on the nightly news is someone who's on Jim Doty's Hall of Fame, one of the great broadcasters, not just locally, but nationally at Arnold. Ed, would you stand up and receive our appreciation? <clears throat> And uh, was mentioned earlier by Doug, uh, our facilities, and Steve, you commented on it. Uh, when, when Dave became our AD, our facilities were a bit uh, shabby, uh, to say the least. Uh, we had a number of problems. We, we didn't have a regulation pool. In fact, we didn't even have a pool. We had to borrow uh, orange highs. Uh, we didn't have uh, the right number of uh, tennis courts. Our um, baseball fields off campus were a bit sketchy, uh, to say the least. And our Hutton Center uh, would, as we say in higher education, had a bit of a uh, deferred maintenance problem. Uh, and now we have uh, what I think are some of the best facilities in, in Division Three. And Jennifer Dubois, I'm sure you would agree with me when I say they are certainly the pride of Skyac, uh, our facilities. And, and Dave was involved in all the TLC going through, not just in the fundraising, with me on all of those fundraising trips. But then after we got the money, I, was always, I always felt secure that Dave was there watching the construction and all the details, certainly something I didn't have to worry about. Steve, you said it all. I love your remarks. We're so proud of you. Uh, welcome back to uh, Mother Chapman. But I love the way you, your focus on when, uh, here's a speech on leadership. You talked about faculty. You talked about people. Uh, and uh, a great athletic program is not about bricks and mortar. We're very proud of our facilities. But a great program is all about people. And um, when you, Look at our coaching staff, which I think is the best coaching staff in Division Three, not just locally, not Skyac, but nationally. Uh, it's uh, a testament to Dave that he hired everyone. Uh, uh, two exceptions, I think Mary Gay Cahill and Janet Lloyd, they were, they were part of Chapman, but you promoted them uh, to head coach. Uh, and they've done uh, an incredible job, as indicated by a national championship in 05, uh, 95 in, in softball, 03 uh, in baseball. By the way, coaches, these are getting a little old looking. I think we need a few more of them. Would you uh, agree, Dave? Uh, and then we have uh, 18 regional championships. But just as a great athletic program, certainly Division Three, is about people. It's not necessarily about winning. It's about what those coaches do in terms of their teaching, in terms of being role models, in terms of their mentorship, as exemplified by, by the uh, students here tonight and the graduates and the Hall of Famers and, and the inductees. Uh, that's what a great program is all about, and uh, Dave uh, made it all possible. Uh, I would... Uh, before I call Dave up, I, I want to acknowledge one other person. He was introduced earlier, uh, Vice Chair of our Board of Trustees, but this person also led the charge in putting together a $1 million campaign uh, that named the Dave Curry Director of Athletics Fund, uh, which now Terry Bozo has the opportunity to spend that money. Uh, and it wouldn't have happened if it weren't for uh, this person, who also happens to be, unfortunately it wasn't Chapman, a champion high jumper in track, uh, and that's Parker Kennedy. Park, please stand up. And now here he is, the man of the hour, the only person in the history of Chapman University and our Hall of Fame, the only non-coach 
AD to be inducted in the Hall of Fame, my good friend, my loyal, devoted friend, Dave Curry. Wow, is that not difficult working for a guy like that? It's been a, it's been a joy and it's been a delight. And uh, you want a picture? Where are we going? Here, Dave. Well, thank you. Thank you, Jim, especially. John David, thank you. Uh, Steve, nice remarks, and I have a headache. I think it was the milk we drank last night. Um, I want to want to say a special congratulations to all the inductees. Uh, one I did not know. Uh, the other two uh, played while I was here and uh, certainly have made their mark and certainly are, are deserving. I've spent 52 years in this crazy business, and uh, three words come to my mind when I'm talking about it, so bear with me. The three words are pride, poise, and perfection. Pride in what you do, poise in how you do it, and then the ultimate is the perfection. It was 1978, I was coaching a football game at Anaheim Stadium. We were I was uh, coaching at Long Beach State. We were playing San Jose State. And it was the third quarter, and we were ahead, and we had a big win coming, and everybody was excited. But there was a timeout called. And I looked up on the Anaheim scoreboard, and it said, congratulations, Coach Curry, on the arrival of Tracy Joe, six pounds, eight ounces. And I'm thinking, we've got a third first down to make. And I had this tremendous rush of pride going through me. Um, it, was, it was that God gave me a little girl. God gave me a miracle. And so we're playing this game, and all I can think of is this precious child I had in my life. Well, that little girl became a, an infant, a teenager, a young athlete, an adult, and a wife, mother of three children and a successful business lady. But one thing my daughter taught me as we grew through the years was how to treat women, how to treat women athletes, and how to take pride in what young women were trying to do back in those days when Title IX was such an effort. And one of the things that I'll always remember my daughter explained to me is that young women want to be treated just like young men. And that's something that, that I'll always remember. You know, I came from a family of five boys, so we couldn't spell girl till I was 12. And now I had to learn to put the toilet seat down. Nineteen ninety-five, if you can bear with me. I was in Storm Lake, Iowa. I was there with the Chapman women's softball team. And we were in the World Series of softball. I went to the NCAA meeting the night before. And as I walked into the room, there were 12 people in the meeting. 11 of them were women. I was the only guy. And half the women looked at me like, what are you doing here? This is a woman's sport. Well, I was there because I was proud of our women's team. And I looked forward to the tournament. The next day, I sat for three days with 11 women, and I watched our women's softball team win, win, win. And it's amazing how those women were so nice to me at the end. And the thing that amazed me was that 
Our coaches, Lyle and Janet Lloyd, were so proud of the accomplishment of our women. And our women came back to Chapman with the National Championship Trophy, and they had a pride that exalted the whole campus. And that's something that, uh, something that uh, stood out with me in terms of our women's athletic program, how important it was to us. Pride in what you do, poise in how you do it. What a lesson. Well, we've been talking about some things. My, uh, I think it was 1994, my son John David was selecting colleges. And like his sister, he was a good student, and he had to make some decisions. Well, I got a call from Phyllis Colriron, our financial aid officer, and she t brought me over to her office and said John David had received a tuition free exchange with USC. Now in those days, if you worked at Chapman, and you're, we had a group of colleges around the country where if your children wanted to go to them, they had a tuition exchange. And I said, well, that's great news. And then I said, thank you. And I said, by the way, is it 50%, 75%? She says, no, no, it's 100% tuition free to USC's film school. Well, I went home to my son and I said, John David, guess what? You got a scholarship to SC. And he had this poised look in, him, in his eyes. The 17 year old young man says to me, Could we talk about this tomorrow? And so I waited till the next day. And he came in and sat down with me and he says, Dad, I've made a decision. He says, I want to go to Chapman. I said, What? Do you want, don't want the SC scholarship? He says, no, I could go to SC's film school and be a number, but I can go to Chapman and make a difference. And to make a difference, he did. Comes to Chapman, graduates in four years, film and television, goes on as a writer-producer at NBC. They release shows like The Apprentice and The Voice. And he goes on to start his own business in Seal Beach, California. And one of the things he does, he comes back to Chapman. And he hires Chapman graduates. But he had this poise about him in his decision making that certainly made a difference. Certainly made a difference to me. Um, one of the thoughts was that um, I go to our baseball team. We talk about our baseball team. Uh, on 2003, I'm jumping around, so hang with me. Um, by the way, I got a pacemaker when I retired, Ed, and it's marvelous. And then my wife got me some hearing aids. The problem is the batteries are shorting out the pacemaker. So I may not hear you, but my heart feels you. We had 2003, we had a tough year. Our baseball program had gone through many pickups, moving from a wannabe Division I to Division III. And our young kids had a lot of poise in them. They complained, but they wanted some leadership. They wanted some direction. Well, we had a pretty good baseball team, but all of a sudden we lost our coach. Coach Peters had left and gone on to another job. And I had a meeting with uh, our baseball guys, and I said, hey, be patient. I'll get you a coach, but you be poised and continue to do what got you where you are. Well, we hired a coach by the name of Tom Tereshek. Tom was an assistant football coach here at Chapman and the head baseball coach at Villa Park High School. But I had known Tom when I recruited uh, from uh, Lakewood High School in Long Beach. And so we hired Tom, and in his first year, we took the team back to Appleton, Wisconsin. Now here's Chapman's baseball team, and you talk about poise. They had finals the week before they left, guys. I think you did. I don't know how you did, but I think you did. But we're back, and uh, we're in the loser's bracket, and we're losing five to two. And our kids were tired, they were worn, they traveled out, but they kept their poise. I could just feel it as I sat in the press box watching Coach Tereshek work with these guys. 
Well, um, as I said, we won. We're behind five to two. And I uh, remember getting on the telephone. I was concerned about the players getting back home. I wanted to get home too. So I called the NCAA travel agency. Now we're in the losers bracket. We're losing five to two in the ninth inning. What do you think is going to happen? And so I'm trying to get an airplane for 27 kids from Appleton to Milwaukee to Chicago to LA. Well, when I'm on the phone, I'm standing and I can barely see the field. All of a sudden, Alex Taylor hits a base hit up the middle, and we get a run score. So I'm telling the lady on the phone that we need 27 seats to Los Angeles. And she tells me I can only get 24, so three of you have to stay. I said, we can't stay. We traveled together. And then just as soon as I said that, Matt Graves hits a three-run shot off the left center field fence. We score three runs, and we win six to five. Now, I had to keep my poise with that NCAA travel agent. She didn't quite understand it. I'm sorry we won, and we're staying. The next day, our baseball team went on in the loser's bracket to win two games and win the national championship trophy. And a group of guys with poise that I'll never forget. And uh, what a joy it was to be with them. Pride in what you do, poise and how you do it, and the answer to that is the perfection. I had a perfect career at Chapman. I had 25 years with the best president in the United States. My wife and I were married in the Chapman Chapel down on Grand, Grand Avenue. You people know that's a little church. And Jim Miller, Professor Miller, officiated the ceremony. It was a perfect day, a perfect wedding. Uh, Vaughn Kelly showed me that little church when he was alive, so I remembered it. Richard By, Richard and I went over there and had lunch, and I talked him into buying the first football team jerseys. But this was a place that was perfect, perfect for me, perfect for my wife, and perfect for our, our experience at Chapman. My brother Bob was my best man in the wedding. He was also my best fan. Well, his family is here tonight. Bob's no longer with us. But I'll always remember my brother because of the pride and the poise and how he helped me have a perfect wedding day. And as I think about him and I think about Chapman, one of the things he did at my wedding, he sang a song. It was called, You Light Up My Life, Debbie Boone. You light up my life. You give me hope to carry on. And I thought, you know what? That's Chapman. Chapman lights my life up. Chapman gives me hope. Chapman carries me on. And I look at you athletes, I think, we got nothing to worry about because you're ready to go. And I look at you for your future endeavors at the university. Um, Chapman's done a great deal for me in 25 years. I want to thank my family for, for being here. Um, my brother, Scott Youngest, asked him to come. He says, well, at least it's not a funeral. But when I see the people here tonight, I think of the memories that so many of us had. And I think of the pride, and I think of the poise that our student athletes and our coaches have. And I think about a perfect evening. Let me give you one last thought. Uh, the best of the example of perfection that I can think of, it's 2004, 14, 2014. And he left me. Coach Owens was sitting right there. All right, Coach. All right. The best example of perfection was a game out in Redlands. And I was standing in the end zone, and our team was at the other end of the field. The score was 31 to 27. There were seven minutes left in the game. And if we won that game, we'd win the championship, something we'd never had done. Well, I'm standing there watching the team come at me. 
Now we got the perfect coach, Bob Owens. We got the perfect quarterback, Mike Leahy. And we got the perfect drive. We go to the 40, to the 50, to the 40, to the 30. The Redlands fans are cheering. The Chapman fans are praying. And then the ball gets to the 17-yard line. And all of a sudden, there's 60 seconds left in the game. The Redlands fans are praying, and the Chapman fans are cheering. And we go on that night to win our first Skyac championship football. After 15 years of swallowing our pride many times, um, 15 years of poison our program, poison our program, we had this championship run. 14 yard, 14 play, 64 year yard drive by the perfect coach, the championship for Chapman. Uh, I'm uh, overly excited, as you might tell, because what a, an accomplishment, how far we had come in all those years. And just to typify that, I'd like to ask Jim Doty to come back up here real quick don't have to talk, Jim. You just jump up. But Chapman won its first championship in Skyac, and it happened to be our football program. And I went to our president and said, hey, would you buy championship rings? He writes a check. He does it. Well, this is something that I would like you to have. And if you open it while I'm talking and saying thank you, uh, this is a championship ring of Chapman's first Sky Act championship in football to our president, Jim Doty. One thing I will always be eternally proud of is a record, and that is having a record with Dave as being the longest serving president and AD together in higher education. Thank you all very much.